Great. Welcome, everybody. And uh, sorry about that little technical difficulty there. I'm on a different computer. So uh, just, just before we get started, just a couple opening remarks. Uh, as everybody knows, we just went into stage three, um, which I think is exciting, the fact that we are moving forward and for our economy, especially for some of our businesses out there that have really struggled. And uh, I give everybody a lot of credit for helping out the restaurants, especially in, in that sector, because with taking out orders and, and keeping everybody active and what uh, Belinda and her crew have done with Shop Local and, and that type of thing. Um, Dr. Mercer just sent out a revised, if you want to go on, check it out, revised uh, uh, order 22, just to bring everybody into play as far as the new uh, numbers and uh, the new businesses that are opening and how they, they're affected by the uh, mask uh, uh, situation. And on the mask, I just want to say, um, to go out of heat on that, but as you can see, in order to keep going with this economy and, and keep the uh, thing running, that uh, the science has caught up to everybody. And uh, as of Friday, uh, uh, Perth, you're on, uh, Gray Bruce, uh, London, Middlesex, Windsor, Essex, Toronto, everybody, Waterloo, they've all gone to uh, mandatory mask rules. So I think that's, we, we were a little ahead of the curve, but uh, certainly from the, uh, the virus situation, I checked the numbers this morning, we're down to 18 or 19, I think it was 19, active cases in our, in our Wellington Dufferin Guelph health unit and five active cases, nobody in the hospital in, in Wellington. So that's, that just goes to uh, go to the uh, public and our uh, residents and our taxpayers and our, that they've done a great job of keeping it down. And I think with this new order and everybody else going with the same order, now I think we can keep this thing going and, uh, and uh, not be like the Americans that they've kind of gone the wrong way. So. Anyways, just want to bring you up to date on that. And again, just uh, get a chance, uh, check some of the neat stuff that's happening with the downtown revitalization groups and uh, all that shop local and loyalty thing. It's, it's amazing what uh, everybody's pitched in and done on that. So anyways, moving forward, I'll call that called meeting to order. Um, any disclosure, any peculiar interest under the Municipal Conflict of Interest Act? Not seeing anybody. The only person I can't see here is David. I can't see David. I don't know why, Matt. I can see him, uh, Mayor Bridge, and, and he's not raising his hand. Okay, good. <laughs> uh, minutes of the previous uh, meeting uh, held on June the 16th. And I have, is Councillor Anderson with us now? Okay. I didn't, I can't see Councillor Anderson either. Yes, so I don't know yes, why this, is. I can't get everybody up. And that's what happened the last time. I'm not gonna to try to touch another button here. So I'll have to keep asking about that. Uh, so moved by Councillor Anderson, second by Councillor Dirksen, that the previous minutes of the June 16th, 2020 Town of Middle Council meeting be approved, are approved. Um, everybody raise your hands. Now I can't see those other two, so I'm assuming they're all right. I'll, I'll look to you, Annalene. Good? All yes. Right. That's passed. Okay, next up is uh, I guess Belinda, Belinda Graham's presenting her minutes. It's the next stop. Is it Belinda there? Yes, I'm here. Great. Thanks, Belinda. Good afternoon, Mayor Bridge and members of Council. Just um, quickly going to recap the Culture Roundtable minutes. Um, you'll note that they discussed the Marginalized Voices subcommittee, so we are moving forward with that. Right now we're um, getting some coaching and mentorship around what that might look like and the appropriate messages to um, get that started. Um, you'll also, if you haven't checked it out, uh, the, these booths were made for talking has launched in Clifford and we're now um, getting people to vote on the people's choice. So if you haven't gone and checked it out, I encourage you to do so. They're all uh, wonderful and there are six of them. Our Treasures of Minto site is uh, currently under construction. So our summer student, Aaron Raftis, is working on that. And a shout out to the members of the Pride Committee for their work um, decorating the downtowns. Uh, and despite not being able to do the uh, Pride in the Park event, they were still able to do some things uh, this year with COVID. So unless there's any questions. Questions? Okay. Okay, thank you. 
Hey, I got to move it mover in a second on that. I have As soon as I find it, there he is. Moved by Councilor Elliott, second by Deputy Mayor Turton, that the Council of Town of Middle receives the Cultural Roundtable Committee meetings of June 22nd, 2020, and Economic Development Planning Committee or oh, minutes. You want to do them next? Oh, sorry. Yes, I didn't sorry. realize you had them. Yeah, I have that. yeah, I didn't have it down. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Yep. Sorry. No, the Economic Development Committee has been quite active the last uh, couple of weeks. And they did have another meeting. We reviewed the survey again just to make sure we hadn't missed anything. Um, we're pretty confident we're doing everything that we possibly can uh, to help our businesses in the areas that we can assist. Um, on a pot, really, really positive note, in the next couple of weeks here, we have about seven new businesses opening in the downtowns. There are uh, two in Clifford, three in Palmerston, and two in Harrison. Um, so that's really exciting news. Um, and there'll be more information. Uh, watch the Wellington Advertiser in the next uh, couple weeks. We're gonna be doing a full page, possibly two page spread on all the great things that are happening here in Minto, including uh, a lot of socially distanced ribbon cutting events that we're trying to coordinate. <laughs> um, also note, um, there is a typo in the minutes. I had put that TG is hiring six to 70 employees that should be 60 to 70 employees. So TG Minto is uh, doing well and they are hiring uh, students and full-time uh, people. And then the other thing of note is in those minutes, we had uh, made a recommendation around a structural grant for OSUM um, Interactive Second Floor. I'd like to remove that um, from this council meeting. There has been some significant uh, changes happen at that building. And as a result, we'd like to reevaluate uh, that, that application again. So we'll bring that back in August. All right. Um, so with that revision, uh, then also, I'll, I'll read the whole thing over again because it was moved by Councillor Elliott, second by Deputy Mayor Turton, that the Council of the Town of Middle receives the Cultural Roundtable Committee meetings minutes for June 22nd, 2020, and Economic Development Planning Committee meeting minutes for June 25th, 2020, and approves the recommendation of care within. Any questions on those? And I'm gonna, oh, Judy? Um, so maybe we should add to the motion that we're taking out the recommendation to- um, Yeah, uh, sorry, the revi yeah, with that revision in there. The awesome, yeah, regarding the revision, yes. Yeah, with the revision. Yeah. Okay, is yes. that all right with the two uh, movers and seconders? Here, thanks. Okay. Gene, you're good. Or who was it? Was it Daphne? Okay, good. Any other questions? Okay. I'll consider that passed. Oh, everybody in favor? I got <laughs> your back. Okay. I consider that passed. Okay. Correspondence. Okay, quite a bit of correspondence. I guess when you only have one meeting every now and again, you get more letters. Um, anybody want to pull any of the correspondence? Mark? Sorry, you're on mute, maybe, Mark. Hang on. You might want me on mute. Uh, F and J, please. F and J. F and J. Okay, yep. Any, anything else? Oh, Gene, no. Jean, and then Judy. Sorry, Jean, I can't hear you. I didn't quite understand G. Does any, did anybody? Well, I think we're pulling it, Jean, so we can discuss it. Okay. Okay, because I think G, they wanted G to pull is, F G and G. Letter, for you, Mayor Bridge, so G, G is, a, is, G is a letter different. Of Oh, I'm sorry. Another concern about decorations on Main Street and Palmerston and Harrison. Oh, okay. Oh, that's right. You're right. Yep. Okay. Yeah, that's right. One's one's on the dog kennels and one's on the. Uh, do we yeah. do we know what decorations we're referring to or? Yeah. Well, the letter it's in the letter. Well, it's not really. It just says decorations, but I don't know which decorations. Well, I, I guess I assume from reading the letter what he's talking about. He's talking okay. about the gay pride one. Oh, all right. Well, then I missed that entirely. It eluded me because I didn't, I wasn't sure what he was talking about. Yeah. 
I guess what I guessed, but maybe I guessed it. I just have to read it again, but we'll have a discussion on it. Um, anybody else? Anything else? Uh, Rudy, you had one? Or Dave? What about D, uh, the official plan for the county? Is that something that... Um, that's just a progress report, Dave. I, that's it? Yeah. That's all they're saying there? Okay. No. What, what did you want to talk about? Well, we can pull it if you want to talk about something in it. Yeah. Just, uh, I just wanted to stay up to date on the official plan. Mm -hmm. But if that's minutes and stuff, I'll read them again. Okay. All right. Anything else? Judy, do you have your hand up? I'm, I'm moving back and forth. I can get you. <laughs> um, I was just, I, I'm unclear. Are we pulling uh, item G or were we just wondering well i think it? i i don't know i have to ask uh, councillor mckenzie why are you you're no he no. was asked about uh he actually asked about f and j oh j which, Sorry. Are, all, Sorry. which are all the letters of concern regarding oh. dog okay i miss, I miss hmm? through you mayor bridge councillor anderson asked about correspondence G uh, Herbert. so i think it's being asked if she still wishes to have that pulled and considered Okay, I misunderstood. I I, mean, I thought you know that's a, I thought it was about the the dog candles for Mark was asking for the two dog candles, but I, I heard G instead of J. It's my fault. Yeah, so that was up to Councillor Anderson. Did you want to so, hold G? I I just wasn't sure what he was asking or saying, or I wasn't no, sure no, what the point of it was. I just didn't get it. Okay. I didn't know what he was referring to. The whole letter was pretty vague. All right. Do you want so to I don't know Jean, if or we need I, to address or not? Do you want to discuss it then, or you're not? Well, did everybody else get the point of it, or am I just being obtuse? I think I did. Or? Judy, do you have your hand up? Well, I was just, um, I mean, there's, I think there's a few different points in it here. I'm just trying to find it again. But um, I think, I, I guess we'd have to talk to him to find out. But I think, what I took from it was in our efforts to make the marginalized in our community less mm -hmm. marginalized or non-marginalized, let's ensure that those who are not currently marginalized don't become marginalized. I think that's what I took from it. Mm. Well. But it's, it's kind of hard to read. Uh, it's handwritten, so it's a little bit hard to read, I yeah. guess. And um, so, yeah. I guess if we really want to know what it is, we need to ask them. Yeah, I, I, I didn't, I didn't take much of anything from. I didn't understand who he was trying to identify or not identify. I don't know which decorations. Is he talking about the strips of material? Yes, I would assume so. But okay, well, I, I missed that entirely because I don't see how they're saying whatever. Okay. So Nobody you want to pull or not? About it. We'll just leave it to be. No, that's fine. Okay. All right. So it, it's J. At my fault on the G. It was a J. And that makes more sense because I, I knew it was about the dog. So it's F and J. All right. That's the only thing we're pulling. All right. Mark, do you want to speak to F and J? Well, uh, there's a lot of uh, feedback there from the public, a lot of reading. And I'm sure that if we had a a, a lot of violations or any of Mr. Forbes would have dealt with them. I haven't mm -hmm. heard of any. No. But just just from these letters, our bylaw is a good bylaw, but the public uh, input here is now asking us to tighten it up a bit because of the dog trafficking. And most of you are aware of that. If you're not, then it's some yeah. of that information is in the letters. Mm -hmm. So and it's getting out of hand in the province even. We've been around this tree a lot in the last 20 years or, and we, I think council needs to, uh, now's a good opportunity to reduce the, to reduce the, uh, this growing business of trafficking through these brokers. Our, a lot of, most of the majority of our kennel owners are responsible people. We're still having that issue, and it's growing of the trafficking. And I think uh, we need to look at it, uh, respond to that public input. I don't know if they ask for responses, but 
I, I think the staff has been in communication with them. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. But I think we, and again, I, I tried I think to do you're, this the last time, but I think uh, we, we need to set a number of kennels that we want to see in the town of Minnow. I mean, right now, there's one for every six square miles. That's what it works out to. And we got three more applications on the go from, and uh, need to do so. I think we need to do something and reduce the number of dogs also allowed in a kennel. Things like that. I, and I put together a motion, but I'm not sure whether you'll receive it now or not. But I, I'd like to get the feeling of council whether to proceed with this. Or not. Well, it's just just becoming a big issue in the in the province, and we certainly don't want that label which is out there in some places that Minto is the puppy mill capital. So well, it can be and, carved easily. And I guess, I guess my one concern is when I got, when I we looked at all the letters and, and some of them are from outside of the town and some of them from inside the town, which is fine. Some of them have a lot of interest in, and I, I, I wonder what the difference between a puppy mill and a kennel. Um, but anyways, one of the concerns I had, I went back to the staff. Well, the one letter is going back 13 years. I think it even refers to Harriston um, that the dog was that they had to take 13 dogs in or something, but that was well over 13 years ago. We we did our, our bylaw in 2019 mm -hmm. um, and strengthened it a bit a uh, bit more and and tried to do it. And what I was aware of at that time, Mark, and what we talked about is that every one of our kennel licenses have to come in front of us, right? Um, now the only thing I would say since and just some of the changes that have happened on the zoning requirements. And the staff can correct me if I'm wrong on this, but uh, to do a zoning requirement now, it's almost nine thousand dollars for somebody to want to get a kennel license if they want to rezone, because uh, you have to pay seven thousand dollars to the county and two thousand to us just to get it to the to the table. So um, I understand your concern, and I my, my my big concern would be I'm not sure that that money is refundable. So if right now, as it stands, we're in a situation where if we have three of them come and we turn turn any of them down um, without changing our bylaw and saying that we want to come to a limit. And I remember talking, and I seem to recall this when we had the discussion last time, the staff were going to get back to us when they felt that they got to a point where they couldn't do proper, uh, you know, checking them out and doing all the proper things. And I believe I was talking to our bylaw officer. Um, we haven't increased any since our last time because we had 14 one but we had one kind of license not renewed and one we had one we've issued so i think we're at the same we were before so but you're right there could be three coming to to us in the next little while when we start opening up public meetings and we have to have this discussion at the public meetings as well so the one thing i did ask and did you find out derek whether because i think i asked somebody the other day michelle maybe if michelle's on the phone um if if they go if we we take these applications in and we change something is with the with the Wyandotte County actually give back their money because I don't think it's refundable on a zoning application I don't think you get your money back if your zone zoning doesn't go through so we have to be very careful as a council to at least let people know in the public if we're not accepting any more applications that's something that'll have to come up but um, if that's what your motion's about Mark I don't know well. That's what I'm thinking. Uh, now's the time to revisit to revisit this. Uh, now we've already accepted some money on some of these, so that's why I'm saying because be, because any of any of these have to come to a public meeting, right? They will, but I, you know, the bylaw. Okay, so if they've applied under the current bylaw, yeah, that's too bad, I think. But at any rate. Well, I mean, still if you not, change it, you can't, not, can't change the rules in midstream. If you want to change the rules down the road, you have to do that. But we can, but that's up to the council to decide, right? Well, the sooner the better. And I'd rather put a motion in to revisit it and put a moratorium on the applications until we review the uh, bylaw again. Just for those two reasons, the number of kennels and the number of dogs. I think everything else is in our bylaw. Mm -hmm. Like we can't keep... Uh, leaning the, the way that they're going with the number of dogs they have and, and the, the traffic and that's going on in the province. 
Well, and, and a little bit on the province. I, I, I think we've been mislabeled here a little bit, but I'll let Derek talk about the, what you can do on the motion and maybe talk a bit about that. I just wanted to give you a bit of background as we have looked into it because I was concerned about some of the letters. The one letter I was really concerned about turned out to be 13 years old. So it's not something this current bylaw, it, yeah. I think you, you changed the world a little bit back then. Yeah. Anyways, Derek, can you speak? Sure. Th through, through you, Mr. Mayor and members of council. So as I understand uh, Councillor McKenzie's uh, want, because council has um, deliberated on this bylaw just as recently as January of this year, <clears throat> this would require a, a notion, or sorry, a motion of reconsideration uh, for you to start to uh, want to have a discussion around the bylaw. <clears throat> if um, Councillor McKenzie is successful in tabling that motion. You can only speak to whether or not you want to reconsider. You cannot speak to the bylaw itself. You can only speak to the matter that's before you, and that is the matter of reconsideration. Um, certainly, um, we you know we 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 act on council's will. Um, there, rightly so though. If if you change the bylaw while you have applications in progress, that could be some issues around that and Mr. Kuypers can probably speak to what that means um, but um, it is certainly up to the will of council if you want to have us go back and revisit that bylaw but it is a motion of reconsideration that needs to be approved by you before you can start to consider it. Terry did you want to talk about the rezoning fee? Uh, yeah, so once we receive the 9,000 uh, and the county starts their review on um, um, their reports um, about the application, um, that's when the uh, $7,000 fee would uh, come out. Um, so even if they withdrew the application and we took what our costs were at that point, um, they would lose a substantial amount of that uh, uh, application fee. I wasn't sure how it went, but Jean, you got I just have a few questions. Um, so at the time of the bylaw, when we looked at that bylaw and it was ensuing from a discussion or an application uh, from people who want to put cattle or dogs in the top of their barn. And I questioned at the time about dogs being in a barn. Dogs are not cattle. We're not raising them to slaughter for meat. We're raising them to be parts and members of people's families. Um, so. And I know they're supposed to keep track, but do we really have track of where all these puppies are being sold and how many are being there? Because if we allow up to 25 dogs and each dog has, say, conservatively six pups at a time, if they all whelp together, which they tend to do because they cycle together because they're, they're located together unless they're boarding them out, you're talking 175 dogs in one building. So that's a lot of waste to deal with. And what are they doing with those puppies? Okay, uh, are we allowed to talk about, uh, we can talk in the, because of the, I wanna make sure we're doing this right. Um, so are we allowed to ask, answer those kind of questions or do we have to do the motion first, Derek? Or, or we can do the, these are all right. Three, Mr. Mayor, yeah, absolutely. You can ask those questions. Perfect, I just, I know, I didn't mind you asking the question, Gene. I just wanna make sure I wasn't causing a problem down the road. Okay, go ahead, Derek. Uh, so I can probably speak to that. Um, so part of our bylaw is uh, we require our uh, cattle owners to keep track of um, litter size uh, for each of the females and where uh, and where all the puppies are being sold to. Um, so part of that too, uh, we require them to uh, provide us with uh, immunization records. Um, so rabies shots, uh, any vaccines that uh, that they get. Um, we've never had any issues with uh, any of our kennel owners uh, producing um, that information. Um, just in terms of the status of our kennel owners in Minto, um, over the 17 years I've been here, um, we've had three complaints uh, over that period of time. Uh, two of the complaints were unfounded, and one was an illegal kennel operation that got shut down. Um, so. I wouldn't say we've got major issues as indicated uh, in, in the letters in Minto. Um, we do do uh, annual inspections um, of the kennels um, and then any complaints that we've had, um, we obviously uh, go out and uh, take any professionals we need to with us. 
Um, the two complaints that were uh, found to be uh, unsubstantiated, um, the first one, we took a veterinarian with us uh, just to check the actual health of the dogs, which turned out to be uh, fine. Um, and the second time was uh, SPCA went with us on, on a second one. So um, again, I wouldn't say that our kennel owners are irresponsible or have issues or anything like that. Um, I, I think they look after their dogs from what I've seen uh, uh, remarkably well. Jean? If I could just, so then do we have an, a number of how many pups are being produced in Minto over a year's time? Uh, we don't keep we know track the of that. Um, we review the, uh, the documentation on site, um, but we don't take copies of it. Um, okay. There's privacy issues to deal with that if we accepted okay. that information. Okay. So we just review it on site with the uh, kennel owners to make sure everything uh, looks on the up and up. Okay. Judy? Um, actually, Deputy Mayor Turton, I believe, has had okay, his hand Okay, well, I, I got him on my Maybe. second page, so go ahead. Well, you can see him, but if I could defer to him first and then I'll come on. Okay, if Deputy Mayor? Yeah, so I, I'm, my question is, uh, there's quite a difference between a puppy mill and a kennel. Yeah. Okay, so the, I mean, I think we need to di differentiate that. Um, I mean, Terry, if you're saying that we, we don't have many issues and we've had two or three over the years, um, we have a lot of uh, kennels that are abiding by the rules. And normally when somebody gets a license, they know the rules and they're, and they're good boys and girls. Where our issues are people that aren't registered. And so, I mean, if we put a cap on... Uh, uh, the number of kennels, that's not going to do anything for us. So, I mean, there's got, and we're not the only ones with the problem. This stuff's all over the internet, everywhere. Google, you can Google puppy mills, and there's names come up from all over Ontario, towns, uh, municipalities. So, I mean, for us to try to solve this problem on our own, I don't think it's going to happen. I think we need help. And we've looked into it. Um, there is no defined term for puppy mill. Um, basically, it's a large amount of dogs in uh, horrible conditions. Mm -hmm. um, again, we've checked them out and haven't seen any in Minto. Um, so I, I wouldn't call any of our kennels puppy mills. Yeah. Judy, do you have a question? Um, yeah. Uh, not, I guess not really a question so much as uh, comments. Um, so I just wanted to. Um, to mention in a barn, uh, a barn can be a great place to raise uh, dogs. I mean, people live in barns. Mm -hmm. They can be uh, insulated, heated, cooled, fanned. Um, they can be perfect for, for human uh, habitation um, and uh, so certainly good enough for dogs. Um, so I don't think we want to get all tied up. It's, it's not your grandfather's barn. And if it is your grandfather's barn, it doesn't look like your grandfather's barn inside. And so I think we have to be careful about that kind of thing. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention was um, I called uh, three uh, kennel owners uh, today, this morning, just to kind of chat and see what I could find out. Two of them are kind of new, and so they haven't actually started selling uh, dogs yet. But um, the other one, he's been doing it for years and years and years. And he sold his dogs uh, from the farm gate for a while. And, but he has dealt, now he didn't call him a broker, he called him a dealer, but it's the same difference, I guess. Um, from what he told me about the people who buy his dogs, I have absolutely no problem with it. They, they sound like caring people. Um, they, t they come and take pictures of the dogs, uh, the pups when they're two weeks old and start to find families. And then in you know, two weeks later, they come back and they take some live footage of the puppies for the prospective owners and they're all, they screen the owners. And, and I thought, what is wrong with like to me, I don't have a problem with um, a kennel owner not selling direct to the family if they're working with a broker or a dealer like what was explained to me this morning. I, I mm -hmm. thought it was a great business model, um, quite frankly. And um, they sounded like very caring people. And, um, you know, I, I think that, um, I think this all kind of started up again because of that story about the um, 
uh, airplane full of puppy or dogs from uh, your, the Ukraine, and that's horrible. That's terrible. That should not have happened. But I think it kind of got everybody uh, going again. Um, I also asked how thorough our um, by law enforcement officer is when uh, they go to the property if they're looking because the, these people were very uh, these three were quite uh, com or, um, familiar with our bylaw and um, they said oh yeah they're very thorough they check they check all the things that are on their list and uh, they felt quite um, they felt like their uh, inspection was fairly thorough so um, just thought I'd pass that on to you and sort of a different story about the broker side because I feel like in a lot of these letters the brokers are getting a bad name, bad name. and and you know the brokers aren't from around here like we can control our kennels but the brokers are a whole other ball game if there are bad ones mm -hmm. thanks Judy um Derek did you want to say something and then I want to finish up did you Th thank you Mr. Mayor I just want to be very clear and, and more for the public part of our meeting is that we take allegations of animal cruelty very seriously and we will go out and investigate and we will bring experts with us to do those investigations. I just want to make that clear to folks that uh, although we have great kennels, but if people have a concern with abuse of, of an animal, that we will go out and we will investigate it. So just want to make that clear. Thank you. And, and just, just to f finalize and what I was going to say, Mr. similar Mayor to uh, Deputy Mayor Turton, and then I'll hang on, is... So, um, Free Mayor Bridge, uh, Councillor Elliott did have his hand up as well. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Sorry, Ron. That's okay. Uh, you're on my other page. There you go. <laughs> so, oh, yeah, go first, and I'll sum up. Um, maybe I'd feel a little more comfortable, and uh, maybe Councillor McKenzie would feel a little more comfortable if the visits and the inspections were unscheduled. Mm -hmm. So instead of give them a week's notice and you walk in the day before or whatever and say we're coming out to see your place then you'd know for sure you wouldn't be guessing that that doesn't doesn't give them the opportunity to clean up or or make things better or just my idea of maybe a, a scheduled visit you can create you can do what you want uh, to kind of set things up and also i uh, I get the idea. I also, a complaint basis, and obviously it'll have to be a written complaint. That the only reason you would go out if someone wants to call in and say, we have concern, we've got a puppy mill out here at such and such a place, they're not on your bylaw, should we go out and inspect or should we wait and make them put in a complaint? I, maybe we should be more casual about how we approach those things. A couple of thoughts. Okay, thank you. Uh, Judy? I was just going to say the bylaw does um, uh, talk about um, uh, surprise, I don't want to use the word surprise visits, but um, visits without uh, that yeah, no notice. So, so it, make, it makes sense to me that perhaps you'd have that one big uh, inspection with, with notice because there's paperwork mm -hmm. that you know you have to have in order and that, and that kind of thing. But, but then I don't think there's anything wrong with having perhaps one one other time during the year for each of the kennels that there's any concern with it, whatever, um, that you just do a random stop. Okay. Um, Terry, did you want to comment to that? Um, and we can definitely look into that. Um, one of the things that we do have to consider too with those random inspections is actually getting access when we're there um, due to like HACCP requirements and biosecurity requirements. Um, a lot of these kennels are located on farms, um, so it does make it a little bit tricky. Um, if we had any concerns uh, whatsoever uh, with the initial inspection, um, we absolutely would do a random. And if we can't get in on that date, you know what? We would try it again another time. Yeah. So great. We Thank definitely you. have those tools for sure. Yeah, and and I I feel comfortable that our staff are, are on top of this. I, I what Derek mentioned is when I got those letters, I was kept concerned too and I wanted to make sure that we weren't uh, missing anything here because we we did have a good discussion on the bylaw um, and it my, my concern is same as Deputy Mayor Turton is I'm a little worried about limiting it because as soon as we stop them 
then we have no control over if they do decide to do them behind. And I don't know how we find out if they were going to uh, selling the dogs, not necessarily farm gate. Uh, how would we find out? Like we'd have to be, the public have to let us know if, if they weren't licensed. So my concern is if at least we have them licensed, we can keep an eye on them. And as they say, we haven't had any complaints really in the last little while. As you say over 17 years, three complaints and two of them are unfounded. So I, I think we got, I think you're right. I think we got painted with a brush right now because of the, of the thing that came out for with the 500 dogs coming in. But I, I'd be a little reluctant to, to put a, a limit on it. But anyways, um, Derek, where are we now? Do we have to, Mark, Mark has his motion or motion reconsideration, I guess. Mark, yeah. did, where are you? Here you are. Right here. Yeah, go ahead. Derek, it will be up to Councillor McKenzie now if he wants to table something. Yes. Okay, so through you, Mr. Mayor, you're, I'm hearing that the uh, these issues are unfounded in our township. They're not fact. And I'm hearing that there's no concern with the number of dogs or the number of kennels we have. When do we stop? Yeah. Like, <laughs> it's too yeah. late when you when you want to do it. I mean, we don't I'm you know what the my main reason behind this is I don't I'm the more kennels we have, the more of those dogs that uh, that go through the broker are getting into a market with health and uh, there's health issues there. And that's, that's, I don't know, you're saying that information is unfounded. I don't know that, but if it's true, then we shouldn't be contributing to that. And I think there are enough dog kennels in Mento at the time, present time. So are you, so are you making your motion, motion of forth to reconsider it? Okay. For, I, that's my motion. So okay. I, that's your motion. Do we have a seconder for that motion? I'm looking. I got two pages here. Councillor Councilor Elliott. Elliott. Okay. I guess then, then we have a seconder. Now, Derek, I believe, or Annaline, then we have to have a vote on this, right? And that's to be five. You have to have that's five right. people. There, there, does have to be a vote. there has to be a um, vote and it has to be majority. So okay. that means five out of seven have to agree right. with this. Okay. So do you want to do a roll call on it or? Oh. Are you, are you? Excuse me for one second. Yeah, go ahead, Dave. So, can I hear the motion? Well, I think the motion was to just to reconsider the bylaw. So we, in other words, the way Derek explained it to me was you need five votes to reconsider, to bring it back to, to do a whole new thing on the bylaw, <clears throat> right? So we're gonna review, our, that would mean we have to review our bylaw um, that we just did in January. We just did this in January, right? Last year. Last year, yeah. That's correct. Um, there, so there can be no discussion, so I can call the vote yep. for you, Mayor Bridge. Um, so it'll be yay or nay. Uh, uh, I'm, uh, I, so the, this is to not bring, yeah, the motion is to bring it back, right? The motion is to bring back the uh, dog kennel uh, bylaw. So you say yes if you're for it and no if you're not. So Councillor Dirksen, yes or no? No. no. Thank you. Councillor Gunson? No. Councillor Elliott? Ah, uh, yes. Deputy Mayor Turton? No. Councillor Anderson? Yes. Councillor McKenzie? Yes. And Mayor Bridge? No. Okay. So you had to have five. Hmm? They yeah. had to have you have to have five, yeah. So, uh, but I will, I will point out to the people that are concerned is we'll keep our eye on this. And as we go through, as you know, everyone has to be approved. Um, and uh, as they say, it isn't cheap. It's seven, $9,000 to get the, to start the process. So, um, and uh, we'll, we'll work towards uh, making sure that uh, our bylaws follow to the letter of the law. Thank you. All right. What's up next, Aline? Here we are. That's correspondence. I just need, uh, we got something on correspondence here now. Uh, uh, we just need a, a mover and a seconder. I believe we have a mover and a seconder to uh, receive the rest of the- Yeah, you don't have that on this, right? Moved mm -hmm. by Councillor Gunson and seconded yeah. by Councillor Anderson. All that the Council of Town of Mental received the correspondence for information. 
Yeah, all in favor? Good, okay, thank you. And now we're up to, do, 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 do. Yeah, here it is. Building assistance, site plan, DM Scholten Holdings, Michelle to present the report. And uh, let the report happen, then I'll state the rec recommendation, right? Or do you want to do it first? Yeah, go ahead. Sorry, Mayor Bridge, through you. I believe the next one is uh, Recreation Services Manager oh, uh, giving a verbal fun. update on the uh, pools and day camps. 6A. 6A. Oh. All right. It's not on my little thing here. Okay. I missed it. Oh, yep. Yeah. Oh, business. Oh, that's there, right. Uh, business and economics coming up again. Okay. Gotcha. Go ahead. Matt. Thank you, Mayor Bridge. I'd just like to give you a quick update on how operations at day camp, uh, the pools and splash pad are going. Um, at day camp, we currently have three cohorts, two in Harriston and one in Palmerston at the arenas. Uh, the ones in Harriston, one's in the lobby and one's in the auditorium so they don't uh, cross paths. Um, each consists of two staff and eight participants, so 10 in all per cohort. Um, you may have read yesterday in the provincial media release that this number is increasing up to 15 as of Monday, July 27th. Mm -hmm. So this will allow us to offer childcare to additional families in two weeks time because uh, we do have some, some kids on the wait list. Um, both the staff and the kids are adapting well to the changes we've made to the programming. And although we can't go on trips this year, we're still able to go swimming at the pool daily. And that's a nice, uh, nice little break in, in the day. We do plan to run for eight weeks, which is a normal time frame for us until Friday, August the 28th. Um, at the pools, we've seen a lot of interest in private lessons and we're running a three guard set, meaning we're teaching up to three children concurrently. Um, this allows for plenty of room in the water and it's something we're seeing at public swims too, because we're operating at 25% capacity or up to 25 participants at one time in our case. And that's for both Palmerston Pool and the Harriston Pool. They're about the same size and the deck area is about the same also. Uh, the patrons to date have been great adapting to the changes from last year. And our lifeguards put together uh, some really neat instructional videos that you may have seen on Facebook and our website uh, that outline what your visit to the pool will look like this summer. Um, if you haven't had a chance to, to look at those, I'd, I'd uh, suggest that. Um, with stage three starting this Friday and at first glance, we do not see any major changes with how pools can operate um, from how we're doing them in relation to stage two. Um, we plan to run until Sunday, August 30th, which is a normal end time for our pool operations. We did miss all of June, but we weren't in a position to facilitate school swims or swim to survive. So um, that's why we waited till July 6th to get started. Um, lastly, at the splash pad, its use has been steady. It runs from 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. daily, and our patrons have been adhering to the rules we've posted on site. Um, it'll certainly help that opening playgrounds is on the horizon as of Friday. Um, so that's something that we're looking at with um, other things that, uh, that can reopen with stage three. Um, we've had a first good week in two days, and I'd like to just say that all of this wouldn't have been possible without the hard work of uh, Greg, Grace, uh, Jessica, Jordan, and all of our summer staff. So that's just a quick update on the pools, the day camps, and the splash pad. Thank you, Matt. Any comments? I'm sitting on both sides of the fence here. I'm trying to catch everybody. I, I just want to make one comment maybe that, uh, you know, a, a few, about a month ago, we, we kept this option open and when stage two came, we were able to open up and I give, I, Matt's already uh, praised all his staff and I want to praise him as well. Um, they really kept this thing in, in the ether sort of and, and kept it there in case we were able to open them. And now uh, some of our neighbors haven't done that and kept our staff kind of involved. And uh, I give you a great job of getting this all up and running and, and making it happen because again, it helps our economy. It helps the fact that we, people are trying to get back to work and, They've had their kids at home and it's nice to be able to get them out and do this. So I um, appreciate all the hard work it was to get it done in stage two and now stage three is moving forward. So looking forward to uh, even some more innovative stuff happening uh, 
when you can, Matt. So you got a great team there, and you've done a super job of of uh, of getting it together. And I'm, I, this this council, I'm sure, is very proud of you. Thank you. Thank you. And there was nobody. You don't need a seconder on that one or anything. It was just for information. Just just an update. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. And next up is uh, business economic development manager and Belinda on uh, a bit of art. Yeah. So before I get to that, I just want to echo Mayor's, Mayor Bridge's comments to the recreation department. As a parent uh, with a young child, much appreciate the day camps and the pools being open. And I feel totally safe and uh, Brindley's having a great time. So thank you for all their hard work. Um, into my mural stuff. So as you are all aware, uh, we received notice about our Rural Economic Development Fund back in December that we received $41,000, almost $42,000 through that, as well as almost the same amount in um, community group sponsorships and our funding. So in two years, over the next two years, we have about $120,000 to do work capital projects in our downtown. This mural event is part of our town's rising, specifically Harrison Rising activities. Between July 28th and August 8th, we will have four artists painting four walls in 10 days. And uh, this is um, based off of the mural that is on the Magical Ice Cream Shops building. And Aiden is back doing one of the murals this year and he's brought three other artists with him. And it's been quite a process working with property owners, artists, um, different groups. Uh, it has definitely been challenging and I wanted to thank Annaline and Gord for all their help uh, in the last couple of weeks navigating insurance, WSIB agreements and everything to have it ready to go. It's quite an undertaking. We've never done live murals before, which adds to the uh, drama and excitement, but also a lot of logistics in the back end. So thank you for your support, guys. Um, yeah, so basically we have four agreements to sign with artists today and as well five agreements to sign with uh, property owners who have graciously let us install these murals on their buildings. So I think that's all I have to say unless there's any questions. Yep, uh, Mark. Oh, you're on mute, Mark. Yeah. There we go. Okay, through you, Mr. You Mayor, to Belinda. The uh, Arts Council and the uh, HHS, the, is the Remax wall was that settled or? Yes, correct. So you can great. see you can see in the agreements that the um, that was one of the more challenging ones because you have a property owner and two groups trying to come to consensus on a design that incorporates everyone's needs. One of the key things with that one specifically was making people aware that the Arts Council and the Historical Society were on the third floor of the library because they're mm -hmm. not able to have signage. I mean, I think we've accomplished that. We did have a couple of members from each group involved in the process. Obviously, the more people you involve, the more challenging it gets. So we stuck mm -hmm. with uh, just the property owner and a couple of members from each organization. Okay. And the design presented in the agreement is what we'll be moving forward. Good, thank you. Thanks, yeah, Mark. Uh, anybody else? I, I, can you see anybody else there, Annalie? I could, no, we're good. So I got to move by Councilor McKenzie, second by Councilor Elliott, that the Council of Town of Minnow receives the business and economic manager, a business manager Harrison mural installation report and considers a bylaw and regular council authorizing the mayor. And my phone just left me. The mayor and the acting clerk to execute a mural agreements in the town of Harrison. And further, the council considers the bylaw in in uh, regular session authorizing the mayor and acting clerk to execute an artist agreement um and i've asked for questions already nobody and uh, all everybody for that against seeing it, nothing it carried okay and do i have to do each one of these i guess and there's one uh business economic development are you doing the one in, on you did the whole thing there belinda right you did them all are you doing them individually? I have another report about uh, the facade grant. Oh, that's facade grant. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead for the facade grant. Yep. Okay. So we have a facade grant for Claridge Brown Holdings, which is Brown Insurance uh, in Palmerston on Main Street. Oh, yeah. That's right. And Paul is going to be repairing the brick and repainting that uh, facade. The total cost is just over 5700 plus HST. 
and therefore qualifies for a grant of 2,888 which would then leave us with just shy of $30,000 remaining in our CIP uh, fund for this year. So my recommendation is to approve that. Yeah, uh, moved by Councilor Dirksen, second by Councilor Gutson, that the Council of Town of Minto receives the July 8th, 2020 report from the Business Economic Development Manager regarding facade improvement grant application P18 for the amount of 286288, the property located at 195 Main Street West, Palmerston approves the, this grant. Questions? Okay, uh, all in favor? Okay, carried. And that's it. Thanks, Belinda. And this, I'm all, I've, I've tried to get here before, but we're finally here. I don't know how I messed that up. But I got too many machines going here. Okay, now we're at the uh, assistant, uh, and Michelle, are you gonna do this one? I am. Thank you, Michelle. Go ahead. All right, so this should be very familiar with everyone. So this is a DM Schulten Holdings Incorporated and they are the owner of Dave Schulten Flooring, which is our local flooring business that supplies and installs flooring to the community and surrounding area. The company operates from a space currently that they rent and council may recall pretty much around this time last year, they purchased 125 Noble Family Road and they're now ready to execute and uh, build their own, providing that we are, that you, that council is uh, willing to execute the site plan agreement and then hoping to have occupancy this fall. So the subject property is just over an acre and they're looking to build approximately six and a half thousand square feet for a two unit commercial building. And this will also include a future industrial space. Town staff from the building, Public Works, in conjunction with our engineer, and as well as the county planners during our regular planning and development meetings, have reviewed and provided comment, and we now feel that we're at a place that it meets all of our Town of Minto servicing standards, zoning requirements, as well as any financial obligations. So as such, staff respectfully recommends the approval of the site plan control application and that you consider passing a bylaw to authorize the execution of the site plan agreement. Thanks, Michelle. I'll make the rec do the recommendation and we'll have questions. Moved by Deputy Mayor Turton, second by Councilor McKenzie. The Council of the Town of Minnow receives the building assistance report dated July 3rd, 2020 and approves the site plan prepared by Triton Engineering Services Limited, last revised dated 2026-20 as recommended by the town staff and its engineer. And further, the, the owner executes the town a site plan agreement requiring completion of the works one year from the issuance of the occupancy permit through the asphalt works and further that the owner completes the asphalt works within two years after the town asphalt noble family road asphalt snow family road and further that the council considered passing a bylaw in regular session authorizing the mayor and acting clerk to sign site plan agreement once the land owner has signed any questions or concerns or questions. comments uh, Deputy Mayor Turk. Michelle, when's uh, Dave going to get started? Is, is this something that's going to go right away or? Oh yes, he's very much ready and uh, willing to go. He just needs to pass this hopefully uh, today and then he'll have his building permit ready and so that he can get it going and be ready for the fall. That is the goal. Yeah, super. Uh, any other questions? Okay. All in favor? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Terry. Chief Building Special, uh, Terry, you want to take this one? Yes, uh, thank you. So um, this report is uh, regarding a site plan approval for Dan Sinclair. Um, you'll probably recall that he purchased uh, this property from us on Noble Family Road as well uh, back in September of uh, 2019 and recently uh, got approval from council for a reduction in the minimum lot coverage uh, from our 15% down to 11.1. Uh, since that approval, uh, he has applied for site plan approval. Uh, the proposed building uh, that you reviewed during the reduction to the square footage uh, remains the same. Uh, it's a 3,600 square foot single tenancy uh, industrial building with a future addition laid out in the site plan approval as well as a mezzanine on the building permit plans. 
uh, staff and our engineer have reviewed the plans and are generally satisfied uh, with the proposal. Um, due to a building code requirement, um, the building is ha it does have to be shifted uh, 1.5 feet uh, towards the west. Um, so that would be away from the Metzger heating uh, property. Um, so with this minor revision, um, we're waiting for an updated grade plan just to reflect uh, this minor change. Um, but being it's so small and the fact that we don't go back to council until uh, or another council meeting until August, we'd like to uh, get a conditional uh, approval to enter into a site plan agreement um, pending satisfaction of the town staff as well as our engineer. Um, so if there's any questions on this one. Questions? Okay, I'll read the, uh, I'll read the uh, thing. Moved by Councilor Gunson, second by Councilor Dirksen, that the Council of the Town of Minto receives the Chief Building Official's report dated July 9th, 2020, and conditionally approves the site plan prepared by the MTE engineers pending the amendments to the plan to the satisfaction of town staff and, engin and its engineer. And further, that the owner executes with the town a site plan agreement requiring completion of the works one year from the issuance of the occupancy permit excluding asphalt works. And further, the owner completes the asphalt works within two years after the town asphalt snowball family road. And further, that the council consider passing a bylaw in regular session authorizing the mayor and acting clerk to sign the site plan agreement once the land owner has signed. And we any questions? We sort of went for questions. And I have a question. Well, yeah, that yeah. minor situation is that is that the time consuming thing? Uh, it's not. Uh, basically, they just need to shift it over on the plan and make sure the grading pattern uh, still works. Uh, I'm anticipating having that revised plan back in the next day or two. Um, he's extremely eager to uh, to get rolling on this, so he's he's yeah. pushing his his uh, his contractors as well. Yeah, and I th I think that if really if if we had another meeting in two weeks, which we don't, we have another meeting in a month, then we could maybe held it off. But I think I feel safe that that they'll get that small thing done with the engineers, with staff. So um, that just allows us to get them started because I think he wants to get construction right away. Okay, all in favor? Opposed? I see any? Annalene, you're watching my second screen, are you? Good. Carried. Okay. And I'm turning you over to Council Dirksen. Okay, thank you, Mayor Rogers. <laughs> Mayor Rogers. Mayor hey, Rogers. Bridge. Um, sorry, I'm reading and talking. Um, <laughs> so, um, call on uh, our water foreman, Todd Rogers, and our there CAO, Derek Thompson, to present the report. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair and members of Council. Um, as you're all very much aware, uh, Council. Um, Minto has become a hub of, hub of development um, and we've got a number of uh, both an official plan review happening and also we anticipate some urban boundary adjustments uh, in the near future. Um, so it is critical for us now to take the step and create our water wastewater strategy and really what we're determining by this strategy is is finding out what's the best use of developable land, what our capacity is, what we need to support uh, development for the future. So it's a, a very important strategy because you, as you all know, we can't have development without servicing. So um, these are things that we wanna make sure that we have in place to help support uh, what I'm sure is great development for the residents of Minto. So staff have worked hard um, with this report and we're recommending that uh, staff work with Triton and we develop this strategy. Um, to be able to help feed into both our the official plan work that's happening at the county, but also locally to support our urban, our urban boundary adjustments that we're looking to do in the very near future. So on that, Madam Mayor, or I'm sorry, Madam Chair, I'm happy to answer <laughs> any questions you might have. <laughs> Are there any questions from anyone on council? Deputy Mayor Jordan. Uh, you are muted, sir. Sorry. Thank you, uh, Chairman Dirksen. Uh, Derek, I think this is a very, very important initiative that you're, uh, you and, and uh, our friend Todd are, are pushing through. And Mark, 
And um, I congratulate you on this because uh, I, I think it's important and we need to get rolling on it. So sure. yeah. it's important to have everything in balance, isn't it? Yep. Okay, anyone else? Okay, I'll turn the chair back to uh, Mayor Bridge to uh, read the recommendation. Okay, you want me to do that? Oh, okay. Yes. Yeah, well, or I can. <laughs> you go ahead. You got it right there. Okay. You got it? Okay. Yep. Moved by Councillor Anderson and seconded by Deputy Mayor Turton that the Council of the Town of Minto receive the Water and Wastewater Foreman's Report regarding the Water Wastewater Servicing Strategy and that Triton Engineering and Town Staff work to complete the Water Wastewater Servicing Strategy by the end of 2020. Okay, so any further questions? Okay, I'll call for the vote. All in favor? And that passes. Thank you. Turn the chair back to you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, uh, Chair Turton. And I'll turn it over to uh, Deputy Mayor Turton to assume the chair for finance. Thank you, Mayor Bridge. Welcome, uh, Treasurer Duff. Here. Thank you, Chair uh, Turton. This first item, um, we've got two people presenting, Michelle and, and Gord. And it's talking about a uh, payment agreement for uh, development charge. So go ahead. Great. Great. Uh, thank you. Uh, as you know, this is kind of the meeting for uh, maybe pioneering agreements. This is the first one. Not quite as bad as murals, but still required a bit of research. And uh, yes, Michelle and I uh, kind of looked into this. As you know, the uh, field of development charges has been changing rapidly with uh, actually more changes announced last week and regulations to come. Um, but now we're, we're moving from the traditional uh, plan to pay everything up front when building permits are received. But for rental housing, there's a bit more flexibility. And we received a request to both reduce the amount of payments and go for extended payment terms. So staff are not recommending a reduction in the amount but we did feel that the request to have uh, extended terms was reasonable. Basically, they're splitting the fees in three, paying one third now, one third in six months, and one third a further six months. So, uh, and you know, again, we're in these uh, tough economic times. It's really tough for developers and small business people to uh, conduct uh, their regular operations and. Uh, we thought this was a request that we could support. Michelle, have you anything to add? Sorry, um, uh, no other than normally the, the developer would pay this prior to the occupancy, but given all that uh, Gord has already explained to you and with new regulations coming forward with the, with the rental capacity, the, um, this seemed to fit perfectly for us. Questions on this, Mayor Bridge? Just a comment. I, I think this is exactly what we talked about as this council, trying to promote and get people to do more rental accommodation. And, uh, and this is a tool we can use in our toolkit now to, to help uh, facilitate that type of uh, growth. So hopefully we can use it in the future as well. So I think it's a great uh, first step. Other questions? So then the recommendation is that the Council of the Town of Minto considers passing a bylaw in regular session authorizing the mayor and the acting clerk to execute a development charge, late payment agreement between the corporation and 5002155 Ontario Inc. Do we have a mover and a seconder, Annalie? Yeah, yes, do. we do. The mover is Councillor Elliott and the seconder is Councillor McKenzie. Does everybody understand the question? All in favor of that motion? Against? That's carried. Thank you. We'll move along to the next item. Thank you, Michelle. The next item then is uh, to do with uh, uh, drainage number 39, 39 drain assessment. Gord? That's right. Um, thanks, Chair Turton. Uh, yes, these figures will look quite familiar to you as we uh, had the estimates at a recent council meeting. Now the work has been done and we know the cost for sure. So this will put a, a bylaw in later session for the full $19,800 amount that was approved earlier. 
So uh, just the next step in the process. Questions for our treasurer? All right, so the recommendation is the Council of the Town of Minto receives the report from the treasurer and roads and drainage manager regarding municipal drain maintenance assessments and considers passage of the related assessment bylaw in open council. Emmeline. Sounds moved by Councillor Gunson and seconded by Councillor Anderson. Does everybody understand the question? All in favor? Against? That's carried. Great, thank you. Uh, all right, Gord, do we want to talk about the budget software package? Certainly. Um, so as you know, one of our objectives for the next year or two is to provide better uh, financial reporting and budgeting uh, information and processes. And so, uh, as you know, we have dealt with uh, Citywide, which is Public Sector Digest for our capital asset management software. And they recently purchased uh, a company that was called FMW, who has been in the budget software um, field for quite a few years. And uh, Deputy Treasurer Potter and I and uh, Jackie Heimers had a little demo and uh, we looked at this software. It certainly uh, has a lot of capabilities. And I did request, I, I wanted to talk to people that uh, use our Keystone uh, General Ledger software as well as citywide and they were kind enough to give me um, six very good uh, references that are all in southwestern Ontario and they're all approximately the size of Minto. Um, the only provisor is most of them are fairly new in the process but they all seem quite satisfied. Uh, it's, it's quite a, a process to set up but that's true of a lot of software. And I think it will make use of the existing uh, Keystone data and also provide a lot more flexibility and uh, more seasonality in our uh, data. And uh, I, I'm proposing to kind of implement this over time because I think it will be quite time consuming. So probably our next 2021 process will be a little bit of this one, but a lot of our existing processes and then um, fully implement it within a year. And uh, as you know, the province gave us some money under the uh, Municipal Modernization Program. So I thought we would fund that out of that reserve as I think it's a, a good example of that type of efficiencies and uh, better capabilities. So, any questions? Questions for Gord? So Gord, so go ahead, Councillor Dirksen. Um, so uh, I don't pretend to understand all of what you said, um, <laughs> but that's okay. Um, but I am interested. So this isn't actually a budgeted item for 2020. This is something that's come up since then. Is that fair to say? That, that's, that's exactly correct. Yes. It's something that we didn't anticipate back eight months ago, nine months ago. Um, and you, th and you think that that 50,000 will, will be the entire cost of purchase along with the um, annual support? Or do you think there's more to be purchased? Because it sounded like you were just going to start with a few modules. Uh, that's all. There is annual support uh, in there, I believe, of $6,000. Yeah, yep. so I was thinking they have uh, an operating uh, capital. Uh, what I'm really interested in, too, would be a uh, financial information return. So. I spend a lot of time on that one. Right. They also have uh, a salary and wages one. And that one I thought, let's see how this would go. Um, you know, I kind of like to ease into things. And it would probably be another expense, yes, if we did go that route. But that's at least a year off. And we'll see how the first ones go and work with that. And, okay. uh, and, and like a lot of software, yes, there's the ongoing, but probably. I'm guessing six to eight thousand per year as support. Okay, thank you, Mayor Bridge. Yeah, thank you, uh, Deputy Mayor Turton. Yeah, and I, uh, Judy, good question. Um, it's not in this budget, but that's why I felt that it, I said to Gordon we talked about it. Is that's why the government gave us that five hundred and some thousand dollars, as you know, to try to do some things that would make us more efficient. And I think knowing your budgets and having your your uh, your different departments able to budget a lot easier and more efficiently makes a lot of sense to use that. So 
that's why it's coming out of that reserve and not actually hitting any of our budgetary stuff at this point in time. And uh, so I, I think that's a good, good way to spend some of that money that we can show to the government that we're actually using it for the right purpose is what they wanted us to try to find efficiencies. So. Other questions? I mean, I, I think some of the new questions that we're throwing at Gord in reference to uh, where mm -hmm. we are um, costing and how close we are to the budget, it's going to make it much easier for him. And, and uh, there'll be a time, I'm sure, in the very near future that all those numbers will be out there and uh, there'll be no need of questions. So mm -hmm. uh, everybody understand the recommendation? Sorry, Gord, do you have something else? Uh, no, I was going to say, I, I think as we all know, it's really... Uh, important to have good financial information this year, not just for mental, for everybody going forward. Yeah, I think it's uh, good to have good financial information in each other. Mm -hmm. Recommendation is that the, sorry, Emily? Sorry, uh, just uh, we would want to change the recommendation then for the funding to come out of what reserves, uh, Cord? Oh, it's the uh, municipal modernization. Municipal modernization reserves. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the recommendation is that the cost of the town of Minto approves the purchase of the citywide budgeting software operating capital and FIR modules at the cost of no more than 50300 plus applicable taxes and is to be funded out of the modernization fund. Okay, and we have a mover and a seconder, Ann Lee? Yes, we do. Yes, we do. Uh, the mover is Councillor McKenzie and the seconder is Councillor Elliott. All in favor of that motion? Against? That's carried. Thank you very much and we'll, I'll pass the uh, chair back to our mayor. Thank you, uh, Deputy Mayor Churton. And uh, our next thing up is the acting clerk uh, is going to talk about our flag policy and protocol and public awareness campaigns. And Lee. Sorry, thank you. Yes, so uh, the first one is about public awareness and uh, proclamation policy. Oh, is it? So as you know, we have our um, our new flagpole out front of the town of Minto, and we did fly our first flag, which was great to see. And um, this just gives us a little more uh, ability to decide what's going to be flying, or, or it's also going to take things away from council. The delegation will be really for the mayor to make those decisions, but it will go out to council for them to be aware. Um, if they have any concerns, then it can go to council first before any of this happens. Um, is there any questions on that? Uh, Judy? Uh, Councilor McKenzie was first. <laughs> oh, sorry, yeah, I mean, he's on my second page. So, sorry, go ahead, Councilor McKenzie. Get off the mute here, okay. There you um, go. So if you have, multiple requests how many flag stop poles are you going to have we uh through you mayor bridge we only have the one flag pole so it will have to be a first come first serve basis it'll be for a, a week or two um it all depends on what they're looking for if no one else wants to fly a flag and they and uh, we can fly it for up to one month for them uh but otherwise it would be for like a one week or two period and so currently we're just flying the one flag Currently are just flying the town of Minto flag. We did but have the pride flag and that was just for the month of June. Uh, but uh, when it is not being in used by groups, then we will fly the town of Minto flag on there. So, you're okay. so Until the Mark, time. on that, we've had other requests sometimes, like say the Cancer Society has a month and we've never been able to fly the flag. We haven't had a policy. So, but I guess if we had two organizations, like two charitable organizations that have a month to, to do it, we might have to give them two weeks each or something like that. We'd have to split it up, I guess. So why are we, here's a devil's advocate again. Why are we putting ourselves in a position where we're selecting or not selecting private interest group campaigns? That's well, not our role. We support them with publicly. Now we're going to fly flags for everybody. Uh, that's another, you know, uh, you know, I think that's beyond our role even though we support the groups. I, I think if you took eight one out of there, I'd definitely support this proposal. For you, Mayor Bridge. Mm -hmm. I know that we have uh, shown flags uh, during council meetings being not really flown out front, but uh, being in front of the council uh, chambers on, on the front of the desk 
and that goes out through video because we didn't have the opportunity to be able to fly it on a separate pole. A pole is separate from the one that we always fly, our Canadian flag, of course. Um, we want to show honor to that. And uh, so that was the point of having this uh, flagpole put in place. Any other Thanks. questions, uh, Judy? Um, so my understanding is that the flagpole was donated. Is that true? Yes, I donated the flagpole. Okay, you didn't have to say that, but okay, I didn't know that. But. Sorry, sorry. No, <laughs> okay. I, just, I think it was okay. out there in the public. So um, yeah. I guess I'm, uh, um, I have always been of the same opinion, and I don't think my opinion is well. My opinion has not changed. Um, I think that uh, we should not be flying flags um, of uh, any group unless we are willing to fly any flag and there are some exceptions of um, groups that we would not fly a flag for so um, the you know with those obvious exceptions in who can fly a flag and who can't um, uh, I'm not really in favor of the policy I know uh, Guelph Wellington Crime Stoppers I think they were maybe the last group that um, we chatted with and they wanted to fly a flag and of course we didn't have the the um the process in place and so on um i just uh i i just think it's going to be quite a uh i think it's going to be quite quite time consuming to um keep track of all of this and then at some point uh the mayor and the clerk who are making the decision on this who made the decision by the way on the june flag that flew as well um prior to this policy um I think that uh, there's going to be, a, I think there'll be a spot that comes up that we'll wish we didn't have flags flying. So I guess that's why I would speak against it. Okay. Anybody else? Uh, <laughs> Deputy Mayor Turton and then Mark. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. Um, I, I think it's a good idea to, uh, for people to ask to have a, a flag flown for them. And I mean, I think it's something like, like a lot of things that we decide that it's not precedent setting. And I, you know, I, I would think there would have to be a pretty serious reason why we wouldn't fly somebody's flag. So, I mean, I'm, I'm in favor of it. Yeah. Um, Mark, did you have another comment? I did. The, so the Canada flag, the provincial flag and ours is three separate staffs, right? Yeah. Yeah. It'd be a so, cost to this, of course. So, so this this is only this is only the community flag that the the flag we flying on, not on the yeah. yeah. Currently, yeah. we're saying that we do fly the three flags. No, through through you, Mayor Bridge. Uh, yeah. It is a it is a standalone. So it is a mm -hmm. it is the one flag stand. It is not a, it is not a three flag staff. No. So I know that you're looking at it is a one flag staff. It is separate from our two flag staff at the front of the building. It is a separate one flag staff uh, to the other side of the building. I understand that, but you're proposing Canada and provincial flags. So we they can't put them on the same pole. You're gonna to have to get another staff if you're gonna fly them, is that correct? If, if we wish to use a three flag staff, that is the, the reason for that is if we ever did put in another flag staff uh, at the front with the other two, that's how you would that's how you would run it. That's just yeah, a protocol sure. put in place. It's it's not, yeah. It's a separate spot. Uh Councillor mm -hmm. Elliott. Uh, I think it's fantastic that we can fly flags for community groups and, uh, and that's what we're here for. Uh, I, I believe that uh, the taxpayer, the people that are involved, our service groups, our, our different groups that are involved in our community, I, why wouldn't we support them? Why wouldn't we allow people to drive by and see a flag supporting our, our groups? And I, I think it's fantastic. It's a great idea to put a separate flag for um let's carry on let's do it okay. anybody else oh councillor dirksen sorry mayor mayor bridge councillor dirksen had her hand oh, up. I, uh, yeah i'm i just had turned you to the other side there all right <laughs> um that's oh, okay there you are, Judy. that's uh <laughs> that's technology um yeah, yeah I, I get and um, one of my biggest challenges with this is the the exceptions on the uh, uh, under 5.4 the community flag poles will not be used to fly flags um, like I you know there's there's a lot of groups that are uh, uh, political in nature or religious in na nature or um, you know there's there's things that uh, certainly 
uh, we as um, servants of our uh, community, uh, our commu part of our community would see as being important. And so I, I don't understand why we are exempting some and saying it's okay with some because you'll never find, it doesn't matter what flag you put up there. Well, maybe, yeah, there are some flags. There are some flags, I'm sure, that everybody in Minto would probably be in favor of, but there are lots of flags that not everybody in Minto would be in favor of. So I, I'm not quite, uh, not quite understanding why we are uh, making those distinctions, but okay. my humble opinion. Okay, no problem. Any other comments? Okay. There's a recommendation here, is there? Uh, do we? Is it just one, or do we have it in both? There, there, there is a recommendation there. Okay, move by. Uh, no, that's. I'll get it. I'll get it. Here we are. Moved by Deputy Mayor Turton, second by Councillor Anderson, that the Council of the Town of Middle receives the Acting Clerk's Flag Policy and Protocol and Public Awareness Campaigns Proclamation Policy Report. The council approved the policy providing for a dele delegation of the authority to the mayor and clerk for approving or denying requests. And we've had your questions. Uh, I'll call the question. All in favor? Okay, and I, I've got the second page. Who's all opposed? Two? Two who? I, I, yeah, I can't see. So it's just two opposed? That's what I saw, Mayor Bridges. Right. Okay, opposed. thank you. I believe I believe Jean Anderson is opposed as well. Oh, you're Are opposed, you opposed as well? Oh, you're you're muted, Jean. I'm sorry. To unmute myself and put my hand up at the same time. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I had I had two screens. So, I, were you opposed, Jean? Yes, please. Okay, so it's four three. Okay. okay. Carried. Okay. Uh, next up is the public meeting guidance document. Yes, thank you. Uh, thank you, Mayor Bridge. Um, so as we are going through COVID, and of course we're having our Zoom meetings, and I, and I think they have been going uh, fairly well, but we certainly need to look at some guidance in order to have some public meetings come forward to uh, the council, especially in pursuant to the Planning Act um, that is kind of required to be holding public meetings. So uh, what I'm providing to you is just a, a delegation guidance that, that the town would be using, um, how they would participate and, and, and such, and how we would try and contact them if they ended up not coming on for the meeting. And that's it. So uh, if there's any questions, this is just for your information. Questions? Uh, Judy? I would just argue that um, we have not met actually since March the 3rd. Not the 17th, because the 17th was canceled. That was a cancellation, you're right. Oh, my apologies, thank you, yes. That, that's okay, no big deal, but. Yeah, well, it's hopefully, the idea is we can get some of these public meetings up and going again and, and, and try to do some of the business we haven't been able to do, so. Um, and uh, the staff been working with quite a few other groups as to how to get this done, so. We're not alone in this. Uh, we're all kind of struggling through it, so hopefully we get something that works. Okay, so I have a recommendation moved by Councilor Dirksen, second by Councilor Gudson, that the Council of Town of Minto receives the acting clerk's public meeting guidance document report for information. All in favor? Carried. Okay, go ahead. And next up is the Harrison Legion. Thank you, Mayor Bridge. So the Harrison uh, Royal Canadian Legion uh, is requesting to have a patio put outside. Um, that way they're able to open up a little more. Um, they do just have to have information from the council that we approve it. And that's the recommendation is that's all that's required. Uh, questions or comments? I have a recommendation here. Moved by Councillor Elliott, second by Councillor McKenzie, that Council of the Town of Minto approves the Harrison Royal Canadian Legion number 296 Patio Application Alcohol and Gaming Commission of Ontario. Uh, I, the comment I would like to make was, Jean, have you got a comment? Sorry, you're muted, Jean. Sorry. Oh, now I lost her. Now I've disappeared. Uh oh. <laughs> There you, you go. Oh, oh. Your video is but we can hear you. Okay, I don't know where my video went. I know, I've done it. Um, 
sorry. I didn't find their their diagram of how they were going to operate very clear. It's just sort of a a, a square with a hydro pole at the corner. Um, as far as social distancing, and I'm assuming they're planning on serving alcohol out there. Yes. Do we have any concerns about alcohol being served outside? I guess we do that with patios and things. It's not, but it's not very clear about social distancing or how they're going to manage the flow of people in there. There's just a gate <laughs> and a square. Okay. So, so they'll have to follow all the rules of the outside patios, just the uh, three meter rule or the six feet rule. Um, and so they, they'd be limited now number of tables and chairs they can have out there, Jean. And, and under the, under the guidelines, under the, the, the game in alcohol have been a little more lenient on these outdoor patios to help businesses. So right. So we've done a few of them. So yeah, they'll have to set it up according to all the, all the public health and other bylaws, but uh, yeah. But it, it really would help them get a little bit of income coming in. I'm a little I, concerned I, about- I get the, that. The, uh, it's, yeah. And certainly they do lots of good service, but the, the sketch, I thought we were gonna see more detail. <laughs> well, I, I think we leave it up to staff to make sure that they, they follow what they need to do, but. Yeah. Through you, Mayor Bridge, it, it really is uh, up to uh, the other public health guidelines to yeah. uh, for, for that. Yeah, yeah, but uh, yeah, I, I just think it's good that they're at least trying to reach out, and I'm just, maybe they'll even do food. I don't know if they're going to do food or not. I don't know, um, but uh, anyways, it might get them some income because I'm a little worried about the legions and some of other service clubs because they haven't been able to fundraise for anything, right? And they still I, have the costs and expenses, so hopefully this will help them. So. Anybody else? Any questions or concerns? Mayor Bridge, some of yes. these service clubs too have commitments financially to different yes. things throughout the, the town too. So, I mean, if you realistically, if you look at that picture, the uh, you can see where the legion is placed and where the door is to come outside the legion. They'll likely have to look at uh, removing their um, smoking section. But like Annalene said, uh, they'll be under some pretty tight yeah. scrutiny there. So, yeah, for sure. All right. Okay, any other questions, concerns? All in favor? All right, thank you. Oh, I guess we're just to bylaws now. Hang on, I can't get my screen to go up. There we go. Okay, bylaws 2020-39 to amend and assess the schedule base on actual costs incurred in the construction of municipal drain 39. Moved by Mayor Turton, seconded by Councillor Gutson, that bylaw number 2020-39 to amend the assessment schedule based on the actual costs incurred for instructing, instructing municipal drain 39 be reduced to red first, second, and third time. Passed open council and seal with seal the corporation. All in favor? Opposed of any? No, okay, good. Uh, bylaw number 2020-40, development charge late payment agreement, uh, 52155 Ontario Inc. Uh, moved by Councilor McKenzie, second by Councilor Dirksen, that the bylaw number 2020-40 to authorize the mayor and the acting clerk to execute an agreement for the late payment of the development charge between 521-55 Ontario Inc. and the Corporation of Town will be introduced and read in first, second, and third time pass an open council seal to seal the corporation. All in favor? Uh, site plan agreement, uh, DM Scholten Holdings. Moved by Councillor Anderson, seconded by Councillor Elliott, that the bylaw number 202041 to authorize execution of the site plan agreement with the DM Scholten Holdings Inc. for purpose for the pr proposed development at. Well, I just lost it here. Hang on for a second. Touched the wrong button. There we are. I think that's it. Yes. Uh, so the bylaw number 202041 to authorize the ex execution of the site plan agreement with DM Scholten Holdings Inc. for the purposes to develop the one, at one proposed development at 125 Noble Family Road, Palmerston be introduced, read first, second, and third time and passed to open council and seal the seal of corporation. All in favor? Uh, bylaw number 202042, mural agreements, Harriston. Moved by Councillor Elliott, second by Councillor Anderson, that the bylaw number 202042 to authorize the mayor and the acting clerk to execute agreements for murals in the former town of Harriston 
the town of Minto be introduced red first, second, and third time and pass an open council seal the seal of the corporation. All in favor? Okay. Minutes to consider. What happened? Is that the last one? Uh, sorry, Mayor Bridge, there are still a few more. Would you like me to read them on your behalf? Yeah, would you? I, my, my phone's not acting up on me now. Yeah, sorry, go ahead. Thank you. Yep, yeah, uh, so uh, the next one is 2020-43 Site Plan Agreement, Daniel Charles Sinclair, Noble Road, Palmerston. Uh, moved by Councillor Durskin and seconded by Deputy Mayor Turton, that bylaw 2020-43 to authorize the execution of a site plan agreement with Daniel Charles Sinclair for a proposed development on Noble Family Road, Palmerston be introduced and read a first, second, third time, and passed an open council and sealed with seal of the corporation. Yeah, Mayor Bridge, if you wanted to call. For all, in, the... all in favor? All right, okay, go ahead. Uh, the next one is uh, 2020 44 artist agreements. Oh yeah, there it is. Are you able to read or would you like no, to? No, go ahead, go ahead, you got it. Moved by Councillor Gunson and seconded by Councillor McKenzie, that bylaw 2020 44 to authorize the mayor and acting clerk to execute agreements for artists providing murals in the former town of Harriston, town of Minto. Be introduced and read a first, second, third time and passed an open council and sealed with the seal of the corporation. All in favor? Great. Right. Um, the next one is 2020-45 confirming proceedings. So moved by Deputy Mayor Turden and seconded by Councillor Dirksen that bylaw 2020-45 to confirm the actions of the Council of the Corporation of the Town of Minto, be introduced and read a first, second, third time, and passed an open council and seal with the seal of the corporation. All in favor? Passed. Okay, and the last one is for adjournment. Moved by uh, Councilor uh, Anderson. Annaline. Yes, uh, I'm sorry, Ellie. Just, the, <laughs> just Go ahead. a couple of things I wanted to make sure we know as a councilor, eh? and I, uh, number three came out, and now what facility are all our facilities open? Our, our community centers, um, our lion's den. Um, what facilities are we opening now? So, so if somebody wants a bucket of dough, they can have that. Fifty people, or how's that work? Ron, I think I think we still have to. I, we're trying to get that clarification because, I mean, it, it's. I, I don't think we can just sort of tell you right now. I mean, the staff are working on that um, and then we'll get it out to you. Uh, I, I think the lion's den is one that probably you would think that would probably be one that you could start using again. But I, I wanted to make sure we went through public health and made sure that all, we have all the things that, because if you read their 20 page document from the province, it, <laughs> it doesn't tell you, right? I read two sentences, George. <laughs> yeah, well, I'll tell you, I read the 20 pages and I still don't know anymore. So I, I just want to say, like, I understand where you're coming from, but I think, uh, Derek, if you're on here, uh, yeah. you, you've been talking with Mark and, and with uh, Matt and, and some of the uh, facility guys and, and trying to work something out and get back to this. To, to yeah. the staff. Sure. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and members of council. As you know, the province did announce the opening of phase three yesterday. As the mayor has indicated, it's a 20 page document that doesn't say much about anything, quite honestly. Uh, <laughs> and we, quite honestly, um, we'll be consulting with our, our local health department on a number of things um, because although the province has suggested it, we, the uh, local uh, Department of Health can restrict certain things. So we're working with that. That all being said, uh, Matt and I and Greg have been um, getting together, we should probably have a suggested list of what we think we're going to reopen um, probably by the end of the week. Um, so we're, we're seeking some clarification from public health on some issues, but we're also looking at what is realistic for us to be able to manage as well um, around reopening. So stay tuned, I guess, is my message. And, and as I said at the beginning, uh, Dr. Mercer did put out a new Section 22 clarifying some of the things with stage three. I just came out today, uh, Derek. Yeah. Um, and I, I did go through it, but uh, I have some questions myself. Um, and I think you have to pair the two together to try to figure out 
but there might be some, I was thinking when I first read it, I thought some of our smaller, like which Ron's talking about, maybe the lion's den or, or maybe one of the uh, train stations or whatever, there could be small, small gatherings in there, but we have to, but I think staff have to feel comfortable and remember what the, what the premier and what the minister of, of uh, health said, um, these are the rules and regulations, but you have to be comfortable in how you're going to run it. So, so that would include, that would include the Norgan. Yeah, well, the Norgan. There's some stuff in there. They're they're talking. They're talking uh, uh, certain distancing and whatever. Uh, yes. Now you know whether you can have popcorn or whether you can't have anything. You might have to wear masks. So how can you eat and drink? So you might not have concessions. I don't know. There's a lot of things in there that and and for bigger theaters like uh, the you know the big cineplexes and stuff. They have to actually build a plan and come back to the minister of of uh, finance actually to present a plan to make sure that they can open up. Other right now, if you went down to Conestoga at the big Cineplex there, they wouldn't be only allowed 50 people for their whole place. So like you could have five people in each theater, right? So it makes no sense. So they have to come up with a better plan. And in Oregon, we might be able to do, but live theater, they're saying you possibly could do. So there, there's a lot of stuff there that has to be sorted out. And and remember, it don't doesn't start to the set till Friday. So. So our, our, lions, our lions were looking at a, a couple of weeks before we even think about opening get yeah. more vacation that's what we're doing too also want to announce i just looked i kept leaving i was looking to see the waterfall is now running at, oh good good the pump was down yeah it was broken and it took us a month and a half to get it so it's up and it's running dave wilson put it up for us perfect perfect excellent okay yeah. Okay. Thanks. Deputy Mayor Turton. How can you see me now? Well, because sometimes I can see, well, because they get, they gave me more people now. I have no idea. I, I can't see Mark or Jeff yet. And Jean. I see Derek looking at his clock. So I just have two quick questions. Okay. <laughs> well, one for likely Todd and one for yourself, uh, Mayor Bridge, uh, the bridge, South Saugeen and uh, Arthur Street. How are we doing? Oh, well, this, I, I haven't been out to see the, the bridge. I don't think, the, well, the bridge, I don't even see how it's going on the bridge. I just avoided, but uh, on 89, I don't know. Are we on, are we on schedule? Do you know? I, I don't know. Oh. Is anybody on from Public Works? Todd, do you know anything yeah. about that? Todd, go ahead. Yeah. Or uh, Derek Knight? <laughs> no, I don't know if any complaints on the bridge, but uh, Arthur Street's on schedule. Everything's going good. Uh, We've got the servicing into the school property there now, and yeah, I think everything's right on schedule where we expect it to be. The okay. middle of August. Derek, do you want to speak to? Yeah, so uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, to uh, Deputy Mayor Turton, the last update I got around the bridge is it's on schedule. Yeah. The last picture I had on it, there was no bridge. It's gone. Yeah. So I, <laughs> it was just an empty hole. They had taken schedule. So, anyways, but I'll tell you, they 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 fixed the twelfth line nicely. Um, they put a nice little patch on the twelfth line, and that saved us a lot of. We had a few people complaining there, and uh, which rightly so, it was in bad shape. And they've patched that until they start doing more on it next year when they do those culverts. So, you know, if that goes the way we we're hoping to do, so. Correct. Anything else? Okay. Would you like me to read the last resolution, Mayor Bridge? Uh, moved by Councillor Anderson and seconded by Councillor Gunson that the Council of Tenemento meet again at the call of the mayor. Thank you. Thanks everybody for a good meeting. All in favor? Well, they don't want to stay. They don't want to stay. <laughs> <laughs> good night, you guys. Good night. <laughs> bye, everybody. See you, everybody. Yeah, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye.